I don't know, I just want to be the one that solves it and figures it out. And sometimes there's no, there's no way you're going to figure it out. Some of my content has mention of extreme violence, sexual assault, and or other triggering content. Discretion is advised. Have you ever wondered about why exactly you like true crime? Well, today we're going to talk about it. Hi guys, welcome back. I am your true crime best friend. My name is Sarah and this is Code 187. Um, today we're going to talk about why it is we are fascinated with true crime. I'm always wondering about the psychology behind why we like true crime. What fascinates us about true crime? At this point, true crime is about as American as apple pie. Well, there's a lot of different reasons why people like true crime, like to listen to true crime. And one of those is we want to know what makes a killer. We want to know how this person turned out the way that they did why the victim turned out the way they did, why the killer turned out the way they did. We want to find some kind of reason that this happened. I mean, I think this is why serial killers fascinate us so much and why serial killers are so popular. Um, I mean, Dahmer and Gacy and Ted Bundy and, you know, all of these are household names. They are quote-unquote celebrities in a certain way and it is because we want to know how they got to be what they are. I like to think of it as that car crash you can't look away from. We know we shouldn't, we know out of respect we shouldn't, we know we're gonna see something we don't want to see but we cannot look away, like physically cannot look away. And that is what it is like to listen to true crime. It's this thing that you can't pull yourself away from, even though you know it's going to scare you. I am also one of those people who, I wanna be the detective. I wanna be the one that solves it. I wanna be the one that holds the key, you know? Like, and more and more we're seeing people in true crime podcasts, YouTubers, they are literally solving <laughs> crimes through their research and I want to be one of those people. So I think that's why I get fascinated too, is because I want to unlock a secret that no one else has. I mean, sometimes true crime gets in this like rhythm and it's so easy to kind of predict what's going to happen. A lot of times it's like white male rapes, kills, that equals a serial killer, you know? And I like <laughs> the ones that are not predictable. The one where it's like one plus one equals five. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. How is this, how is this possible? That is the kind of stuff I like and the kind of stuff that I like to bring to the podcast and bring to you guys, I'm sure you know. But it's so interesting and I don't know, I just wanna be the one that solves it and figures it out. And sometimes there's no, there's no way you're going to figure it out, but it's still interesting. Another reason people are obsessed with this is because of injustice. We wanna believe that there's a good guy and a bad guy. We wanna believe that the bad guy is gonna go away forever. We want to have that injustice solved. And so a lot of times like with shows on TV, we're like wanting to know if that guy got caught um, and that's another thing that's intriguing. 
So those are popular reasons why there are true crime fans. Let me tell you why I love true crime. Um, and there's, an, it's a combination of all of these things, but um, I also love living in the gray area. I love thinking of things as not just black and white, but there's so many layers to everything. Um, you could have a really, really complicated killer or a case that's very, very complicated. And you have to live in the gray area with true crime. I mean, there is a certain extent where wrong is wrong and right is right. But there's also cases where it's like, I don't know, you know? So I think living in that gray area is where I like to be as well. Um, I like to do research. I've always been a writer. Um, I used to like write books in middle school and they weren't good, but I loved doing it. I loved writing poetry. I was on newspaper staff. I loved writing and the research of writing. And for me, I like telling a compelling story. I want to captivate my audience. I like to bring you guys to that point of what's going to happen next. And it's been very interesting for me to get to do that on the podcast. Um, the podcast especially, I get to build suspense. I get to leave you on a cliffhanger. I get to surprise you and give you a good writing and a good piece of work. And it just grabbed me and that is what I love to do. I also get to help you guys out. I also get to give you tips. I get to tell you what I know. I get to give information about new cases, um, give resources, lead people to organizations that they might have not known about. All of that stuff is the stuff that kind of breathes life into me. Um, on top of the fact that Sometimes I like being scared. I like being afraid at night. I like not knowing what's going to happen. And so you put all of this true crime stuff together and you get me <laughs> and all of the other people who love true crime. When I was researching this subject, it was interesting to me about the fact that psychologists think that true crime gives us control of our anxiety and our fear. And I'm a super anxious person, um, as you all know, um, and it does give you a sense of control. I can pause this podcast. I can stop this video. I can move on with my everyday life. I don't have to watch it if I don't want to. And for us to be able to be in control of our fears, our anxiety, be in control of the story as well. Um, I think it does have a certain um, calming effect for us. So for me, I have learned over the last year, because it's coming upon a year that I've done this, that I can control this. I can go to work, like this is my job. I clock in, I do research, I write, I record, I edit, <laughs> and then I can leave it. And I can do other things in my life that has nothing to do with true crime. I can be a good mom, I can be a good friend, I can, you know, go on walks and be out in my community and I'm not this. <laughs> and so it's, it's so many layers to a person and I have learned not to make true crime my whole identity, um, even though it's very hard. I've also have been working on trying to turn it off in my head, um, especially when there's a case that affects me very much. I am trying really hard to separate it from who I am as a person. That murder, that disappearance, it's done. Um, after I do what I do, I have no control over that. So that murder, I have no control over whether that person lives or dies. And I get to do this 
because I get to put information out there. Tips, things that can help next time. And so I go to bed easy and rest easy knowing that I can leave that behind even though sometimes it's very difficult. I choose to be a very positive person and there's a lot of people who think that if you love true crime that you live in depression <laughs> and you live in the dark and there are a lot of people who do and um, sometimes it is very dark and very depressing but I wake up every morning and I choose <laughs> I make the conscious choice to be happy. I am one of those people who I believe that the glass is full if you fill it. So I believe that if you look at life as good and positive and you have a positive energy, that's your glass is full. You have all of your tools to make a good day and I've always been positive even though I have depression and anxiety <laughs> like I take my meds <laughs> and I choose to be happy every day I get to go to bed knowing that I've made a difference um, and you can too you know just by hearing stories just by going on and signing petitions or sharing a post like you're creating a better world. So you can go to bed knowing that you've had your impact on true crime. You can be a true crime crusader, as you will, um, and still be empathetic and caring and upbeat and positive. You can be more than one thing. And I think people kind of get lost in that and they think that a true crime YouTuber or a true crime podcaster is this. And I went through that. I went through where do I fit in this community, you know? Um, but I can be more than one thing. And I can give you really good true crime information and still be who I am. And I think that's super important. No, I'm not up beat about the death of someone. It makes me sad. It makes me feel all of the feels inside. Um, but I can still serve this community in a way that a life is not all doom and gloom. And we can make it better. I hope we make it better. I think that a person's life is not wasted if they can impact others. Um, and so that's what I'm just setting out to do. So please choose to fill your glass today. Um, go out there and <laughs> be everything that you want to be. I wish you well, and I'll see you guys next time. Let me know how you feel about all of this in the comments below. All right, I wish you well. Bye. Hi guys, I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any of the content for Code 187, please click that subscribe button, that like button, that share button. Help us out, help us grow. Um, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, yeah, check us out on there. Give us some ratings. Um, tell us what you think. We're also across every social media on Code187. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think that's it. Um, and of course, YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe um, if you like our content and spread the word. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.